The FSB in Russia is pretty much like what the KGB used to be. It's a feared security service that Vladimir Putin once led. CNN's Melissa Bell just caught up with two FSB defectors. Her view was of Moscow from the inside. A life of privilege and access, including an FSB vehicle. As a doctor working for Russia's federal security service, the powerful FSB. I'm Maria Dmitrieva. Today is October 12th, and I filmed this video in the plane from Moscow. A Cold War-style defection, booking a flight to France before anyone suspected she might go. I am now on the French territory. Complete with photographs, as well as work contracts, patient records and references to prove her identity to French authorities. She also brought documents she thought the West might be interested in. I brought photos, audio and video recordings, which confirms that the majority of the Russian army is against some of the policies of the current leaders. At my own peril and risk, I was able to smuggle my phone into the FSB building twice and was able to make some records. She also brought recordings of conversations with senior officials, she says, to hand to French intelligence, currency, as she sought political asylum. Dmitrieva is one of a flood of senior Russians, from soldiers to Wagner mercenaries and FSB employees, now arriving in Europe, so many that Putin promised in December to promptly identify traitors, spies and saboteurs. Even as Europe has been expelling senior Russians, 600 in 2022, including 400 spies, according to the head of the British intelligence agency, MI5. But in an exclusive interview with CNN, former senior FSB lieutenant Emran Navruzbekov says there are plenty of active agents left. Navruzbekov comes from a family of security service agents, many of his relatives now under arrest in his native Dagestan. Before defecting, he worked for the FSB in Poland. Now he's seeking asylum there. The role of the FSB since the beginning of the war, well, they wanted to end the war quickly, but failed. Now in the FSB, it's every man for himself. Everyone wants to escape from Russia. Every second FSB officer wants to run away. Now, already, they understand that Russia will never win this war. Of course, I'm afraid. I know how they work. History says that in any case, I will be killed. Vladimir Osechkin says he's helped at least 20 senior Russian insiders escape since the war in Ukraine began. The exiled Russian human rights activist is on Moscow's list of wanted criminals and insists on meeting in a public place. In September, French police opened an investigation into a possible assassination attempt at his home. I saw my wife and children who spent more than 30 minutes on the floor and uh, the children was very scared and my wife uh, like, like mother to protect them because it's risk of the shoots. In this moment, uh, it, it was very difficult. Here it's one part. Osechkin says it's his help to those fleeing and the documents they bring that make him a target. Like the images he shows us on his computer of what he says are Russian surveillance radar positions aimed at Europe dating back to 2017, given to him, Osechkin says, by a three-star general now in exile. Putin, why he want to kill me? He very scared. There is a lot of people who now work in the Putin system, but they want to find the way to work together with West, with Ukraine, with Europe, with the United States, and to stop the Putin. When Isechkin leaves us, it's with some of the policemen who, since September, ensure his security day and night. Maria, like many of the Russians arriving, has no such protection and little money left. But she agreed to speak to us, hoping for a better future in the West. And Melissa Bell joins us now. I mean, this is just extraordinary what they're doing. How do Western security services make sure that some of these defectors are not intelligence agents sent by the Kremlin with either false information or to try to get in with other defectors or, or you know, anti-Russia groups? 
Well, the fact is, Anderson, they simply can't. And there have been so many examples across Europe, but also in other countries neighboring Russia, of people who fled claiming to be seeking genuine asylum, who've turned out to be still working for the FSB. In fact, Vladimir Sechkin that you saw there in that report uh, was tricked by one only a few months ago, a man claiming to need his help, who turned out to have been sent by Moscow simply to try and get closer to him. And because of that, what you're seeing is more and more of those neighboring countries and European countries uh, simply deciding that they're not going to be giving visas to those trying to flee. Now, that leaves uh, many Russians who are trying to get out in a very difficult position. Now, you might say, why have any sympathy for the people who've been working inside the regime of Vladimir Putin, but that suspicion also affects so many other Russians, Russians who come from much lower down the ladder, journalists, for instance, who've tried to get out since the war began simply because their lives are going to get so much harder as a result of it. And what they find themselves uh, is in positions where they manage, if they manage to get to Europe, they have no more access to their families who've been left behind and might well be in danger, no access to their bank accounts, facing that deep-seated suspicion about who they are and what they're doing and why they may be in Europe with very little prospect of getting asylum. And, of course, the fear that they'll simply be sent back to a country where they will not be treated tenderly. Right.